Dry Tropics through the Landholders Driving Change Project has organised this workshop today in Yungala, which is the land of the clouds. They're looking to help landholders improve their soil health and drive land and water quality outcomes with a specific focus here on managing giant rat's tail grass. We've got specialist speakers as well as project staff who are here to help landholders achieve both their local and catchment aims. When I first talk to people about fertilising GRT, they think, well, you'll have GRT 15 feet tall. But the actual opposite happens. If you've got animals present, because you change the protein from about 5% to about 10%, you change the digestibility from about 35% to say 55%, suddenly they chew it. Coming from Collinsville, I had no idea what rat's tail even was when we come here. Um, it was pretty heavy with lantern, tobacco and all that, and I didn't even focus on the uh, rat's tail. And you clearly see it sort of got fairly out of hand with us. We done a fair few things, but I've sort of looking back now, I think a lot of the things we've done were just sort of wrong, wasted a lot of money on things that were totally unnecessary. I suppose um, we know all the things not to do now. So I was basically here to, to give an overall talk about what GRT actually is as an actual weed, and then to try and explain the different perspective of, that I have on how you can manage it. GRT is an actual grass which grows amongst grasses. It is particularly invasive. We know a lot more about the botany of it, but because it is a grazing type weed, I thought I would try to explore about eight years ago the options of using the livestock themselves to manage the weed, as opposed to a herbicide. So what I've been trying to do was work out what we need to do to encourage the livestock to actually do the controlling for us, hopefully herbicide free. Rather than see this, that I've got to spend $100 or $200 per acre per year on killing rat's tail, have a think about if there's a class of animal I'd like to improve, or if there's a cost I'd like to reduce, like buying a feed for weaners and stuff, can I use that, that attempt to improve those critters or save that money to put some inputs to that paddock where it's got bad rat's tail and the cattle? What John has said today has really made some sense. We've put that much into poisoning in that and sort of seemed to have got nowhere, but that soil quality, looking after that and using the animal cattle to do a bit of work for us, I think sounds really good. Work on that intensive cell grazing and looking after the soil. When we came up here from the inland country, they said there, there is a bit of rat's tail and we just thought, okay, we'll treat it like methenium and just a quick spray and that's gone but um, didn't realise what it was until, or how bad a, a weed it is, and then it just explodes. It took a bit to sink in my head about feeding it instead of killing it. <laughs> and um, yeah, it makes sense what he's saying, but yeah, yeah, improve your pasture and everything at the same time, yeah. I thought it was really good that we're kind of focusing on good grazing management practices as opposed to um, just going to, to chemicals as a first line of attack on GRT. Some of these places that are overrun with it, they, they have to actually graze them. And so I think by, by doing that rotational grazing, um, getting, getting the cattle in while it's short and still palatable to them and, and got some level of protein, and if they're rotating properly, there's still some substance in it for the cattle. Uh, and then in turn, you know, your other grass are gonna come through. Soil health and pasture management is crucial to managing this weed. What they're finding more and more is that really an integrated grazing management is the way forward to reduce numbers and, and also make it cost effective because every bit of money they spend on soil health and pasture management delivers more than just spending it on chemical.